Hello and welcome to the Coaching Crowd podcast with me, Zoe Hawkins, and my friend and co-host, Joe Wheatley. Hi, everybody. Today, we're talking about what to do after completing your coaching professional apprenticeship. We know this is a route that some of the people in our Coaching Crowd community take, where their employers fund their coaching training through the apprenticeship levy. And there are lots of questions about what to do after completing that. So we're going to share our thoughts with you today. Absolutely. And I think for those of you listening and wondering about the coaching professional apprenticeship, it's a level five qualification. So many people after they come from their coaching professional apprenticeship are really thinking about how could I become a level seven practitioner? And the difference between the two is really the level seven being a master's level qualification. So it has greater depth, greater breadth and provides a more extensive coaching training experience. So those people may come out of the coaching professional apprenticeship feeling like they've had a a great experience, but really thirsty and hungry to learn even more about coaching and how they can uh, best serve their clients. So the first obvious route is to continue your coaching training. Um, So to move into a higher level qualification, obviously we provide the level seven. There are also um, ways to engage with universities to do further exploration of your coaching training through their own courses as well. So it's worth thinking about if you have the appetite for study and the appetite for continued learning, looking at extended programs where you can spend more time in that learning container with cohorts, uh, building your breadth and depth of coaching as a topic. And we're currently exploring how we may be able to get approval for accredited prior learning at that level five that could contribute towards the level seven. And that level seven qualification is really about focusing on developing your skills, knowledge and competencies to coach senior and executive level clients or coaches. And so for your coaching practice hours, you need to be coaching that level of client, whereas for the level five, you can coach any individual. So, you know, for some people that feels a bit daunting, but obviously your coaching training provider like us, we're there to, to support you with that and with the content as well. So if you're interested in exploring the possibility of a top up, of course, you can reach out to us at the info at igcompany.co.uk address. I think with the, um, on completing the apprenticeship, what happens is a lot of people fall in love with coaching during that. Now, some people may have been absolutely desperate to do it, uh, study coaching, uh, mentoring, and other people may not. It may have been what was recommended to them because they are a leader or a manager, and it's often perceived to be an excellent qualification uh, for those people in those roles, which it is. And then they might have fallen in love by surprise and actually just really, really want to learn more. Sometimes it's the case that the training provider that is partnered with the organization isn't a training provider that the individual themselves would have chosen if it was up to them to go and find a provider. And so the opportunity to continue their learning is also about focusing on the type of organization and trainers as well as topics that they want to engage with. And that's what we often hear in the coaching crowd is, what can we do with you now that we finished our coaching professional apprenticeship and we're like well it's not just about us there are lots of options we'll talk more about that now we find that uh, when you do the apprenticeship you'll probably have covered coaching psychologies like transactional analysis you might have covered some gestalt maybe an introduction to neuro-linguistic programming and there's only a certain amount that you can cover when that is a small part of that level five program because it's a broad program that you cover so you might have felt drawn towards a particular topic I think oh NLP I'd really love to learn more about that it's so fascinating and with NLP you can train in NLP as a practitioner or a senior practitioner you can even go on um, as a trainer the same with those other topics there are lots of different options for developing specifically and maybe even becoming a specialist in any of those areas. I remember coming out of my um, coaching qualification and having that bug, as you've described there for coaching. And I think the first place I went to was transaction analysis and doing, uh, it was just a light touch. I think I did a two day training in transaction analysis to get a deeper understanding of those concepts and how I could apply it in coaching. And I sort of visited each of the different coaching philosophies 
to build my own um, depth and breadth around those topics. <clears throat> and then I went into a period of consolidation. So it was really about building my coaching hours. And I think to anybody coming out of, um, you know, a training and a coaching professional apprenticeship, like we're discussing here, do you think about how will you continue to build your experience and build your learning? Um, how are you going to continue to reach clients to be able to build up that practical application? Because you get really good at coaching through coaching. You know, the, there is the learning part and there is obviously learning about coaching, but it's really applying everything that you've learned. So taking a look at your toolkit that you got on your apprenticeship and looking at, have I really made use of everything that I already have? So have I spent time embedding this with my clients? Have I spent time building my confidence and using all the tools? I think when we come out at the end of a coaching training, often there may be three of the tools we've used several times and we feel really comfortable with and we could start to build a comfort zone around the different approaches that we use. So I would encourage you to extend that comfort zone by digging into that toolkit that you've been provided and really taking time to embed and practice that doesn't mean that you don't go and do other learning at the same time I think that's if you've got a passion for it absolutely but also focus on the application of what you've already learned um, and making sure that you feel competent and confident to use what you've got um, you know with with practice clients or, or paying clients or internal clients however you're choosing to move beyond that apprenticeship yeah I mean as part of the apprenticeship or the level five qualification you are required to have created a CPD plan a continuous professional development plan anyway so you are going to have a plan I think what happens is there's often a fear of I don't know what I don't know I don't know if I know enough about the industry what if I am now paying for my training myself because my employer has supported me with the apprenticeship and they've said that you know there is no funding to support me with that so now money so I really make sure that I'm investing that well and it may be that you're somebody that is thinking about coaching as a you know short medium longer term exit strategy and you want to make sure that the training you're doing next is going to help you with that in which case you might consider something like psychometric profiling tool if you were thinking about working within organizations or you know if that's a gap in what you have to offer it may be that you are particularly motivated to support clients at a particular point in life. And so it's about getting to know those ideal clients and what is it that they would be looking for uh, from. And you might want to broaden your toolkit and do something that maybe isn't even mainstream coaching. Maybe it is, you know, an alternative uh, of that. I would encourage you to look at accreditation. So, You've got your qualification. Look at the coaching bodies. So the three main ones uh, are the ICF, the International Coach Federation, the MCC, the Mentoring and Coaching Council, and the Association for Coaching. And do your research into them. Work out which one speaks to you and your values and what you want to do with your coaching. Look at the different levels of accreditation. Get yourself accredited because that gives the credibility that you understand the works, you have met the core coaching competencies for that level and look at what's the next level up in accreditation. What do I need to do in order to achieve that? And ask for advice from those coaching bodies. You know, what would be good CPD for me to do? What would and wouldn't count? So you might want to look at where your interest lies and check that those courses have an accreditation if that's going to be important for you. So uh, the ICF example require when you go for re-accreditation for you to have at least 40 what they call CCEs, which is good, um, continued coach education. So if you take something like our emotions coaching practitioner training, it has 40 CCEs. So it would meet that requirement and support you to develop your knowledge and your kit around supporting clients with their emotions that we all know show up in every single coaching session some people feel flooded and as coaches you might wonder how can I support my clients um, in that situation or maybe you've got clients that rarely talk about their emotions or perhaps they are a blocker for them and so you might want to learn more about how to support them so you can accelerate um, or deepen the coaching 
and the transformation that's possible through the coaching. So those are some pointers also to be aware of. Typically, um, coming out of a level five qualification, you wouldn't have the depth around emotions to necessarily feel able and equipped to have conversations with your clients and to open up emotions. And yet emotions are, in our opinion, a fundamental part of coaching, like to, to be able to help clients with deep transformations, to help clients really achieve their coaching outcomes sustainably emotions are behind all coaching. So whether a client is having a difficulty with their line manager or difficulty managing their team, that difficulty is often the emotional impact that it is having upon that client. So the emotions coaching practitioner is designed as a ongoing piece of training and development for coaches, be that from the coaching professional or otherwise. I think what also came to mind as you were talking about that, Joe, is I think there's a piece in time of really thinking about who am I as a coach so you you do your coaching training and you're very busy learning the skills to be able to coach and the approaches and techniques and then you know the opportunity when you finish your coaching training is to start to turn that to your identity of like actually what is my style of coaching what's my brand of coaching and even if you're an internal coach I think this is hugely valuable because if somebody is looking for coaching you can describe what coaching is, but coaching is a process. You know, it takes somebody from where they are now to where they want to be. But the experience they will have whilst going from A to B comes down to the type of coach that you are. And I think being able to articulate who am I as a coach? What is my style of coaching? I think is a deeply important part of, of becoming and stepping into no longer being a trainee coach, but being a coach in your own right and being able to stand on your own two feet in this corner of a new profession that you've been building. I think training programs, ongoing training programs like ours, the emotions coaching training can help with that because it helps you to really lean in and explore who you are as a person as much as who you are as a coach. I think it comes from experience, as we've said, and like the more coaching you do, actually the more experience you get of the different challenges that you enjoy coaching because I think it's a two-way street actually do you really enjoy supporting clients with challenges like confidence and imposter syndrome or do you really enjoy helping people to secure career changes and promotions or maybe you enjoy helping people with their resilience and their well-being you know which which pieces do you particularly enjoy supporting clients with because that can help you to start to describe with more confidence and a greater depth of identity who you are as a coach and that opens up a whole different area of focus after completing the apprenticeship which is if you are wanting to develop a business out of it you may feel a bit at sea in terms of like well how would I even know what what I was going to niche in is it a good idea to niche in you know what would I do in terms of a website how would I get clients to pay how much should I charge for that and you know that's where you might want to look at some support with that whether you get yourself your own coach whether you join our business lounge which is a paid membership for coaches starting out and developing their businesses and and wanting to get answers to all of those questions and support during that phase that often is not covered obviously it's not covered on an apprenticeship because that's not part of the purpose of it it's a it's a work-based learning program funded by your employer but by doing that program you may find yourself discovering a whole new career I remember when I started out and came across coaching I thought wow you can do this for a job oh my goodness um, and it takes some time to be able to really start to look at your own identity think you know can I see myself having my own business, standing out there on my own, that whole visibility piece that we know goes along with that. So that is another option is to explore the possibility of working for yourself. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be uh, as a takeover, an exit from your from your current role. Many people we know have side hustles, you know, coaching in an area of the community or you know the internet that they're particularly passionate about that their work perhaps doesn't give them the leverage to be able to do so able to satisfy some of your values 
in a way that doesn't infringe upon your current employment. And I think also there's other ways that you might feel drawn to want to use your coaching skills um, to pay it forward, you know, for getting involved in community groups or supporting in voluntary organizations in a different capacity, but ways that you can use what you've learned, not just in the workplace, but beyond that. So I think taking some time on that practical application piece um, can be really helpful. Yeah, I think I think the Association for Coaching have a, like a co-coaching setup so you can get experience, come together with other coaches, take time to practice with them. So if you've been doing an apprenticeship and you've been learning the whole time with people that you know, if it's like an in-house apprenticeship, you might feel like, yeah, I've got my apprenticeship, but can I really coach? Often there still is that question because I've been doing it in this kind of safe bubble and environment. And, you know, you might feel scared maybe but also that desire to want to test out and also learn from other people and wondering well what do other people you know people that study with other people what other content do they get what other knowledge do they get have I missed out on anything are there any gaps so reaching out developing your own network of coaches having conversations with them around what values elicitation exercises do they have how do they work with that what about beliefs what do you have for that sharing your resources and your ideas and continuing to read widely around the topic of coaching and in doing so challenging your own thinking around coaching what it is what it isn't where it starts where it finishes who you are as a coach the role of the internal coach versus an external coach all of the many 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 different aspects of that it's really important there are lots of free webinars that you can attend as well um, often run by the coaching bodies those will all be little avenues and routes where you can start to learn more about where you want to go with your coaching and your development as a coach for you it might be that coaching is the bit that really resources you to do your day job Mm -hmm. and in learning more about coaching and being in this world enables you to show up in the very best way that you can whether you're an operations manager or a team leader or whatever the role is that that you hold and make sure that you have supervision in place if you're going to be coaching people and you will have had that support um, during the program it's really important you have that continued support from a supervisor because it's about checking out the ethics of your coaching it's about your well-being and also your development as a coach and they will help you to really connect with what you in a way that's right for you not the other person that you did your apprenticeship with that's now going off to do whatever they're going off to do and you might think oh I should do that because they're doing that but actually really centering around what do I have energy for what's going to give me the return of my time and my emotional investment in the way that I want to so you're not at sea I think is one of our messages you're not on your own Um, you can speak to lots of different coaches and ask them the routes and the pathways that they took for Zoe and I Uh, whilst we didn't do an apprenticeship obviously we did our own training in coaching that really opened our eyes up to the different areas of coaching that we that we kind of had a little taste of that we wanted to go deeper on and 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 learn more about we also looked at what what areas of coaching were not covered so for example you'll usually be focused on one-to-one coaching when you do your foundational coaching training but you might think hmm I really love working with groups or my organization is now wanting me to use my coaching skills in a group context and I don't feel confident to do that. So you might want to look at a group coaching program or perhaps team coaching. And there are different accreditations now for coaches in uh, team coaching and also um, obviously different trainings that are available. So those are some other avenues. We talked about accreditation because that's that really important kind of credibility badge. And also what The thing that it does is it helps you to feel like you belong to a particular community of coaches where you can, you know, get publications. So often through your membership of your accrediting body and the accreditation you have, you'll often get journals as part of that accreditation fee that you've paid and the process you've been through as well as those events you can attend and that will help to give you direction you might want to aim to to move up through those accreditation frameworks so that you can get to the level of master coach and then of course your CPD will continue beyond that 
I think what we're saying is it's a great opportunity, isn't it? Once you finish a coaching apprenticeship to be able to focus on what you enjoy, what fills you up and to not see it as the end of something, but to see it as the beginning of maybe a, a second career, you know, maybe it's something you fully invest in, but certainly a part of the career that you have invested in so far, it creates almost like a spin off for you to go and resource yourself. Um, so hopefully today's podcast has given you some ideas. Also for those of you who haven't done an apprenticeship but have finished and completed a coaching training program, perhaps this is giving you some ideas about your ongoing continued professional development as well. If you want to check out any of the things that we've mentioned on this podcast today, you can visit our website, which is igcompany.co.uk. And whilst you're there, you might want to look at our new coaches resource hub as well, which is an online marketplace that we're building a bite-sized CPD and resources for coaches at all different stages of their development.